Thank you, Tyler. Welcome, Jerome. Happy New Year. Let's get right into it. When I look at the landscape, especially post-CPI, and see the big drop in yields and all the buying, first thing I'm thinking about is how juicy these yields look, really, from T-bills all the way out to the three-year. Your thought? Obviously, the recalibration last year in yields mean bonds are back, but for several reasons. One, clearly yields are back from that regard. Investors can see that across the curve, despite what your outlook is for the economy, despite where you think the Federal Reserve is going to do. The front end is a little bit safer. So there is a siren song of safety in the front end of the yield curve that we have to be very cognizant of, despite the uncertainty where the economy is going and despite the uncertainty where the Federal Reserve might ultimately prove its destination to be. And the issue with the short end is that if investors, viewers out there think, wow, I love this, I can get 410, 414 in a two-year, or I can get 440 in a T-bill. But you have rollover risk. Right. And you want to think about it from a perspective of not only having capital today that you want to preserve, but capital over the next one to two years to preserve, perhaps to allocate. Let's put it this way. The reallocation of capital over the past year has been one that higher rates, higher cost of capitals has led to a recalibration of risk. Where we stand today is that bonds offer a volatility suppressant to overall portfolios. Said simply, the income from bonds is something that investors need to consider in the current environment, no matter what trajectory interest rates are ultimately headed. And so while inflation might be the factor or data point du jour, we ultimately have to be in the, point, in the position to actually put it into a portfolio and rationalize that their income is actually something substantial at this point A big time. discussion we had on CNBC this morning. Who's correct? Can the market be wrong? Can the Fed be wrong? And you and I were discussing this off camera. Not an easy topic, okay? So I'm going to go first, okay? I think the markets are never wrong for one reason. Because if the information of the moment, there's people that make markets, there's people that take markets. They're willing to financially put themselves at risk to give you a price. That price at that point in time, given all the information, is the price. And if things change, it will reprice. Your thought? We actually, you see that in the markets we're going on right behind us here each and every moment of the day. What I think is the rationalization is the tension between the destination where the Federal Reserve of Monetary Policy and the market expectations are. You have jobs which are clearly on the still remaining hot. Weekly jobs debt is something that we should be paying oh, attention to. I'm telling to. you, these continuing claims and exactly. is a big deal. So the tension here is rationalizing what is currently the truth in the market size versus where the destination of that truth might reside three, six months before. And then overlay onto that economic conditions that might evolve over that point in time. Earnings, S&P uh, uh, valuations, things like that are going to come under pressure as we get further in the economy. And at PIMCO, we're expecting a slight recession as a result over the course of later this year. You know, there was a point in time where we, we were using things like the greater fool theory that people would be, investors would be buying things that really didn't make sense. Right. But always knowing that their negative interest rates was a great example in Europe. Why would you buy them? Because the next person's going to pay up more than you. Right. There is a bit of that, and I don't mean that in an insulting way at all. There's a bit of that in the short maturities that's creating this tension with the Fed. Many people believe there's going to be a recession, but yet I know there's trading stocks from the long side and interest rates, they're buying them looking for rates to go down. How can you explain well, that? Well, I think you have to look at it in a slightly different paradigm. That's a capital appreciation trade where you have people trying to buy on the follow-up. What we're really talking about today is a situation where the second component of return, total return, is income and income generation. And so you don't necessarily need to be exactly right in the forecast of the person to come after you today, especially with rates at 4 and 5 percent and some asset classes and fixed income offering 5 to 7 percent yields. It's actually pretty attractive. So the precision isn't exactly what's needed. The recalibration of rates, the liquidity environment, the higher cost of capital, those are all things that actually are playing positively to the outlook for investors, whether institutional or retail at this point in time. Pause. The front end is just a safe pot. So and 